There are very few academics that can program to a functional degree. Yes. Okay, guys. You know, I had been predicting for some years the collapse of the web programming industry where the number of jobs would radically shrink. I had been predicting that simply because the job people are doing is so easy that it would get economically optimized away. But it appears that the coming economic crash has accelerated that part of it, all right? But you have to think down the chain. So if the number of shitty web jobs is gonna drop drastically, which it appears it is going to, you know, again, we don't know for sure, but it appears reasonable to expect that. What's next up the chain? Well, now there's this whole supply side of all these people getting so-called computer science degrees where they barely learn how to do things in JavaScript kind of enough to maybe pass a job interview of a company that doesn't care very much who they hire because they're just trying to bulk up, right? So that whole supply side is going to collapse as well. It's hard to find a job that is not web development. Well, soon it will be hard to find a job that is web development. So have fun with that. Yeah, so just be ready for that. Like, I would not be going into a university that barely teaches you to program in JavaScript and waste four years of your life doing that. Like, that would be a bad choice right now because by the time you come out, things could be radically, radically different. So either you have to go to a good CS school and actually learn computer science, which is kind of bullshit as well, but don't, don't go to one of these, like, basically any school that got big in terms of teaching computers between 2010 and today, don't go there. Yeah, anything after 2010. If they didn't have a thriving computer science program before 2010, do not go there. Your guess is wages will drop, but the demand will still be there. No, dude, these companies, the biggest companies are already laying people off. And you have to think about what a layoff does, right? So they went from hiring, okay, to a lot of them did hiring freeze for a couple months and are now laying people off. When you lay people off, you've reversed the direction of the hiring. It's not just that you're not hiring anymore. It's that now there's all these surplus people who, by the way, have more years of experience than the new people coming out of college going on the job market, right? Like, because of this phenomenon, things can shift really fast in terms of the perceived availability of jobs. Because you're going from, you're going from, you know, there's 11,000 people who want jobs every year and like maybe 15,000 jobs every year to there's 12,000 people who want jobs every year because it's a growing field. And there's negative 50,000 jobs a year. It's like just a, a radically different, I don't know. Those numbers are, they don't make sense. Those numbers were not at the right scale, but you get the point. I'm just going for proportionality. These companies hired a huge amount of people during the pandemic. Yes, but here's the thing. Okay, this is what you have to be prepared for. Yes, they overhired during the pandemic. And then they realized, oh, we overhired. We assumed, like, the, this is the party line. Okay, he, he, what you have to realize is that the CEOs and the COOs and the PR people at all these companies, their job is to convince you that the company is not doing badly and is not effed permanently, right? That's one of their primary jobs. Now, They've said, oh, we overhired during the pandemic. So we have to reverse that a little bit. They haven't even reversed that. A lot of these companies are up 30% in staff, 35% since the pandemic, and they've laid off 10%, okay? So they haven't even reversed that yet. But in general, they're under correcting. This is a well understood phenomenon. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have references for you, but we could go look them up later. Um, it's well understood that in general companies undercorrect when it comes to having to shrink. So they're undercorrecting even for pandemic, but now we have also economic <laughs> shrinkage coming. Um, and so you have to correct for overhiring during the pandemic and the economic shrinkage. And that correction would look like 50% for a lot of these companies. But you can't lay P50% off because of the optics. Elon is doing it because he actually, well, and then he has this third thing where it's like, 
Twitter was too big for what it was doing anyway, even before the pandemic, right? But for most of these companies, a correct layoff would be 50%. Like that is the hard thing to swallow because it's, again, it's 33% for the pandemic and then an added amount for economic decline. So when you see these layoff numbers of like 10% and they seem large, there's a lot more coming down the pipe unless something like we, we could have some crazy economic boom for an unforeseen reason in the next year. But if that doesn't happen, this is going to be a lot more shrinkage. So this is the thing is the, the magnitude of the layoffs at Twitter is being, you know, everyone's freaking out about it and it's being, you know, forecast as some kind of disastrous management or a mistake or, you know, oh my God, the company's going to collapse. And it's like, no, actually the company is going to collapse if you don't lay off 50% because the economics don't support it anymore for all these companies. Well, not all of them, but many of them, right? And the fact that you don't see most CEOs doing layoffs of that magnitude means that these companies are being incorrectly run and they're going to suffer for it. And it's not, it's not fun to hear that, right? Because that means you have all these people without jobs, but isn't it kind of weird that we shut down the economy for two years and somehow everybody still has jobs? Like what, how did that happen? It's because a lot of the jobs are fake and not supported by the economics. And that's painful in the short term, but the sooner you fix it, the better off everybody is. You want people in jobs that are actually being productive <laughs> because unproductive jobs, you can only extend and pretend for so long before things unravel. So that's where we're at, as far as I can tell. Again, I'm not an economist. 